Number one, find the following for path A in figure 2.59, the distance traveled. All right, so let's first take a look at part A and path A. So over on the right-hand side of the graph, we find part A there in green. So we have to calculate the distance traveled for path A. So remember a very straightforward definition for distance. I'll write it down here. So distance, right, is basically a measure of the ground covered. Measure of the amount of ground covered. Whereas displacement, um, and we're going to get to that in part B, but I might as well just define it right now. Displacement is essentially the difference between the starting point and ending point. Between the start and ending point. Okay, so armed, armed with those definitions, let's take a look at uh, path A. So the distance it traveled. So let's take a look at where it started. It started at a display at, at a value of zero. It ended approximately, it looks like at a value of seven or so, right? If I were to dash this all the way down, it looks like that ended at about a value of a seven, right? These are both in meters. So now to for part A here and path A, the distance would just be the difference right between zero and seven. So we would take seven meters minus zero, and that comes out to be seven. So that's simple enough. Okay, uh, part B. So now we are dealing, now it says, part B says the magnitude of the displacement from start to finish. Okay, so again, same thing for path A. Okay, so let me just erase some of these markings here. So path A again, where are we starting? We're starting at zero meters, right? That's the start. And we're ending, it seems, uh, at approximately seven meters. So for part B, okay, the displacement, which we're gonna call X, Okay, is equal to the technical definition for it is equal to the final displacement minus the initial displacement. So since I'm doing a final minus initial, really I need to put in a little triangle here that stands for delta that represents the change in displacement. Okay, so let's plug in the values. So my change in displacement was the final displacement value, which rep was represented by seven meters, minus the initial of zero. So my displacement was a total of seven meters. Now, they didn't ask for the sign, they wanted just the magnitude. Um, but if you plug in the values appropriately uh, into this formula, then the sign will always come out correct. Um, in this case, though, it really wants the absolute value of it, since it just wants the magnitude, not the sign. But since it came out to be positive, it won't do anything if we take the absolute value. So that's the final answer for letter B. Notice it's the same for letter A, and in this particular problem, the distance happened to be the same as the displacement. Moving on to now part C, it says the displacement from start to finish. So again, displacement is the same thing, right? You're going to notice it's literally going to be the same calculation. So final minus initial, seven minus zero, and that'll equal seven meters. So again, they don't want the absolute value this time, but it is positive. So all three of these values work out to be the same in this question. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Remember, if this helped at all, please subscribe. Until next time.